Bastards, the underdogs of history, born of passion, deprived of inheritance, and yet so often full of ambition. The way we perceive them has undergone significant changes throughout the medieval period. Join us as we explore the decline of illegitimate children. Firstly, what even is a bastard? Well, that actually isn't as straightforward as you would think. It would be an oversimplification to conclude that a bastard is the same as an illegitimate child. Before we can define a bastard, or illegitimate offspring, we must understand where they originated from. You see, many societies entertain the idea of a footwife, better known as a concubine. These women were additional wives of lesser stature, not necessarily acquired through an arrangement between two families, but often by other means such as purchase or bride napping. Throughout the ages, wealthy men tended to collect concubines alongside their primary spouses. Several societies did not distinguish between legitimate and illegitimate offspring, or care whether their mother was a footwife or so-called proper wife, meaning children tended to inherit equally. The concept of illegitimacy would have had little meaning in many such civilizations, as long as the father recognized the child as his own scion. So where do we get the concept of illegitimate children? Enter the Romans, who had their own variation of concubinage. Their take on the concept was not quite what you would expect. You could even argue the Romans did not have concubines in a traditional sense. It's a bit complicated. The Romans had different types of marriages, but they still believed in monogamy. But how can monogamy and concubinage coexist? Well, they don't, not really. Arguably, the Roman concubine was somewhat similar to the concept of a mistress than its barbarian equivalent. Imagine you are a free man in Rome and your wife has died. You can now ask a former slave girl to move in with you. When she moves into your house, she becomes your concubina. You are expected to treat her as if she were your wife, even though she is not. However, she isn't a slave either, nor is she a part of your family. Instead, she is essentially a special servant. Your arrangement is a quasi-marriage. The important thing here is that concubina is different from the aforementioned barbarian footwife. Furthermore, you can't have more than one such woman at a time, nor can you be married to a legitimate wife. Hence, your concubina is a substitute wife. The etymology of the word is quite interesting, as you might have thought. The Latin word concubina is how we get the English word concubine. The word itself means something like bedmate. Regardless, the children your concubina birthed to you cannot inherit your property or carry your name because they didn't originate from a legal marriage. Whether these children should or should not be considered bastards is debated amongst historians, but by the law, they were certainly classified as illegitimate. Because of the inheritance complication, it was common that a patrician would only pick up a concubina after his legitimate spouse had already provided him with legitimate heirs. Generally, the position of concubina wasn't looked down upon, though being a descendant of such a mother-limited career opportunities as they lacked the status and honor of their sire. Despite this, it is difficult to imagine that these natural children were entirely bereft of the benefits stemming from their father's connections, assuming they did come of age before the death of their father. Indeed, the minors deprived of a father were often met with a much grimmer fate. Cases like that were noticeable enough to catch the eye of various emperors during late antiquity, firstly by the co-emperors Valentinian and Gratian, who enacted the so-called Humane Law, which entitled natural children to one-twelfth inheritance. Later, the famous emperor Justinian granted fathers the freedom to bestow a larger share of the inheritance on their illegitimate issues, but only if they lacked legitimate offspring. As we have now talked about the source of illegitimacy, we can move on to discussing bastards in the medieval period. While the status of Roman concubines and their children would remain more or less the same in the Eastern Empire, much more interesting revelations would occur in the West that will have to wait for another time. 
Hello, and thank you for being one of the five people to watch until the end. I'm so sorry about this video being incomplete, but I ran out of time. Anyhow, as there are so many artificial history channels, I have decided to sign off my videos. Sorry about my annoying voice.